So first of all, it's an honor to be here. Um, these conversations that brought the XPRIZE here to India began some five years ago. I truly believe that we're living during a time where there is no problem we cannot solve. That if you think about it, a thousand years ago, the only people who could touch the problems of India were the rulers. And even then, all they had were armies. A hundred years ago, it was the industrialists who could build railroads or factories. Today, it's anyone. Any of us, powered by exponential technologies, literally, the knowledge of the world on Google, access to infinite computing on the cloud, AI, robotics, synthetic biology, 3D printing, we have at our fingertips the technologies that were only possible for the largest governments and corporations 20 years ago as an individual today. And what it really matters is your passion. Are you ready to do what it takes to solve the problem that you care about? Have you figured out what your purpose is on this world today? Because today, an individual can positively impact the lives of a billion people. It's never been that way before. And this beautiful alignment that we have is literally that today the world's biggest problems are the world's biggest business opportunities. All right, think about that. Giving access to water, energy, healthcare, learning, food, shelter, all of these things are truly the multi-billion dollar businesses. You want to become a billionaire? Help a billion people. And today you can. Today you can. One of the insights that I had that really changed my life I run the XPRIZE on one side of my life as the chairman and CEO, and on the other side, I serve as the uh, co-founder and chairman of Singularity University. And I remember in conversations with people who were looking at the world and saying, you know, should we bring our children into this world? Is it morally right to do that? And I used to say, what world are you looking at? I'm looking at an amazing world. I'm looking at a world that is extraordinary beyond belief, beyond comparison. And the realization is that today, there's a challenge we have. The same technology that puts us in touch with people around the world also is constantly beaming in all the negative news from everywhere, constantly, no matter where you are, every murder in high definition is brought to you in living color. Because it turns out we as humans pay 10 times more attention to negative news than we do to positive news. And that was an evolutionary advantage because hundreds of thousands and millions of years ago, if you missed a piece of positive news, that's too bad. Missed a piece of negative news, like you know, the rustle in the, in the bush where it's a tiger, your genes were out of the gene pool. And so we have a part of our brain called the amygdala that pays 10 times more attention to negative news than positive news. But the challenge is, despite the negativism that is constantly flowing to us, can we look past that? Can we look at the actual numbers, the data? And if we do, what we see is an extraordinary world of change. A world that over the last hundred years, you know, the per capita income for every nation on this planet has more than tripled. The human lifespan has more than doubled. The cost of food has dropped 13-fold. Energy has dropped 20-fold. Transportation, 100-fold. Communications, thousands of fold. If you think about it today, you know, a teenager in the poorest parts of Mumbai or in, uh, in Kenya, wherever it might be, on a cell phone has better mobile comm than the head of a country did 30 years ago. And if that teenager is on Google on a smartphone, they have access to more knowledge and information than the president had 20 years ago. It's extraordinary. And by the way, on that smartphone also comes a high-definition camera, video camera, two-way video Skype, a collection of books, things we would have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on just 20 years ago is now free. There truly is this democratization, right? Google for that teenager here in the poorest parts of Mumbai is the same as Google for Larry Page in Mountain View, this flattening of the world. And it's the realization that it's these technologies, these accelerating exponential technologies that are coming online today that represent the greatest levers we have for changing the world. And so I talk about this, my, my brother and good friend Naveen Jane talks about this, that there is no challenge we can't solve. There really isn't. 
And I wrote this book called Abundance in which I realized that the technology that you're creating, that you're investing in, that you're using, that technology is the force that takes what used to be scarce and makes it abundant now. And there's this process going on of this move from scarcity to abundance. We don't realize it, we forget about it, we, we dismiss it once it becomes abundant. But let me just give you some context here, right? Because the simplest example I use in my book is if you had an orange tree filled with oranges and I plucked the oranges from the lowest branches and all the lowest oranges were gone, all of a sudden oranges going from being plentiful to being scarce until I invent a piece of technology called a ladder that gives me higher reach and access to those oranges and they become abundant again. And this is happening over and over again in almost every field in every area. We're living on a planet that is bathed in 5,000 times more energy from the sun than we use as a species in a year. It's not that it's not there, it's just not a usable form yet, but that's what technology will do because we're in the middle of a solar revolution where the amount of solar energy, solar production is skyrocketing while the price is plummeting. And if we have abundant energy, we also have abundant water, right? 70% of our planet is blue. Yes, 97.5% is salt, 2% is ice, and we fight over a half a percent. But the technology to transform that with graphene, with molecular materials, with the kinds of work that Dean Kamen is doing uh, with Slingshot will unleash that. I'm very proud that at the X Prize, we are unreasonable. That is a mantra that we have. We believe that there, you know, that we can make the impossible possible. And we look for what are the problems in the world today that should be solved that haven't yet been solved. My childhood dream was to fly into space. And you know, I grew up dreaming about becoming a NASA astronaut until I finally realized NASA wasn't gonna get me there. And in fact, it wasn't their job to get me there. If I was gonna go to space, it was gonna be because as an entrepreneur, I was gonna make it happen. And I started some 17 companies, most of them in space. And I read one day about Charles Lindbergh crossing the Atlantic in 1927 for a $25,000 prize and how that prize sparked nine different teams to all try and do it. And the guy who put up the prize, Raymond Ortega, only backed the winner, not the losers. And I said, what an amazing way to bring about a breakthrough in an area. So we're launching prizes in in a range of areas. But honestly, as we sat back and looking at what kind of prizes we would potentially be launching, the needs of what I call the rising billion, those empowered by technology, those here in the emerging market, is something that in our heart and souls is one of the most important areas we can solve, but not from our corner office in Southern California. To really know the problems that are here and what problems need to get solved, we needed to come here. We're living in a time where in the next 20 to 30 years, I truly believe we have the ability to meet the needs of every man, woman, and child on this planet. When I say that, I don't mean it you know, flippantly. And I'm not talking about Ferraris, I should say Range Rovers and Louis Vuitton handbags. I'm talking about a world in which every child has access to water, learning, healthcare, energy, and these things are possible. This democratization is completely possible because on the backs of these exponential technologies, which grow deceptively and then explode disruptively, these technologies, they dematerialize, right? They dematerialize physical goods and services. So I no longer have a GPS on the dashboard of my, my Land Rover, which I do have a Land Rover. Um, that GPS unit is now an app on my phone. I don't carry around a flashlight, it's an app on my phone. I don't carry around library books or records or cameras. All these things have physically dematerialized as bits on my phone. And when they dematerialize, the cost of replicating them is free. And they basically demonetize. And so these exponential technologies are demonetizing the things that we used to pay for. And so when they become dematerialized and demonetized, they also democratize. They become available to everybody on this planet. And perhaps one of the most important things going on this decade that you need to hear, you need to know about, because it's changing everything, and I'm shocked I don't hear more people thinking about this, 
is that in 2010, we had about 1.8 billion people connected online. Today, it's around 2.5, 2.7. By 2020, that number will grow at least to 5 billion people connected. If my friends at Facebook or Google or SpaceX have their way, it'll be 7 or 7.5 seven billion people, every single person on the planet with a megabit connection. So what's the world look like when every single person has a megabit connection? Well, first of all, the realization is these three to five billion new people coming online right now, this next five years, not like during your kid's kid's lifetime, right now, during your lifetime, if you're a CEO of a company, during your planning horizon, three to five billion new consumers are coming online. What will they buy? What will they invent? And all of these people coming online who have been literally, you know, living by the skin of their teeth, so to say, are all entrepreneurs, right? They've had to be entrepreneurs to stay alive, to figure out how to make every day work. But now those entrepreneurs coming online have access to the world's knowledge on Google. You know, cloud computing. They have access to more cloud computing than the Joint Chiefs of Staff in the US Defense Department had 20 years ago. I mean, it's crazy. And cloud printing, and synthetic genomics, and AI. And so we're gonna see an explosion of innovation like we have never seen before. Because the number of people with access to the tools is literally going through the roof. You tell me what's gonna be impossible. Right? My companies that I'm very proud of besides SU and XPRIZE is a company called Planetary Resources that's backed by an extraordinary group of investors and we're building the spacecraft to go out to prospect claim and ultimately extract resources from near-Earth asteroids. I mean, that's crazy. That's science fiction until it happens. Most recently, we announced a company called Human Longevity, myself, Craig Venter, Bob Hariri. Um, and it's a company that is now, the, in nine months, it's become the world's largest genome sequencing facility on the planet. Our goal is going to be, we're sequencing thousands of genomes Per month, we'll be getting to hundreds of thousands of genomes and millions of genomes within the next four or five years. And besides everybody's genome, the three billion letters from your mother and from your father, it's also your microbiome, your, your high-resolution MRI, your metabolome, all the data that is you and your phenotypic data. All that data goes, puts into the largest database. And we just hired Franz Ock out of Google, who ran for 10 years Google Translate, to basically interpolate that data, to understand what does the six billion letters of your life mean? Why do some people live to 120? Why do some get Alzheimer's, some get cardiac disease, and not others? So we believe there's an ability to literally transform, add another 100% to the human lifespan. Our goal is to make 100 years old and use 60. So, and of course the question becomes, if that's the case, what happens to the world's population? But there's good news there. Because as Bill Gates said not too long ago, there are two things that reduce the human growth rate. And that is to make a population better educated and healthier. And ladies and gentlemen, that is what we're doing right now. It, if there was ever a time to be unreasonable, it's now. If it's ever a time to find your passion and without with abandon, go for it, it is now. An honor and a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much.